the job than just playing football. Coming out as Danaher brushes his way through the pack, a left foot shot, and it's not a bad kick, it's a goal! It took them five years to do it, but in last year's elimination final against Fitzroy, the Sydney Swans proved their mettle as a major premiership force. That narrow loss was attributed by many to the absence through injury of captain Dennis Carroll, who was one of only six remaining members of the team that first crossed the border back in 1982, has been through the hard times. It saw the Swans languishing on the bottom of the table, much to the delight of the Melbourne fans. It's added incentive for us to go down there and do well when they are absolutely booing their hearts out at us, but you know, we've come to know that and understand that now that that's going to be the way that we'll be treated down there, but that's just part of football, like we're Sydney, they're Melbourne. I guess Brisbane will get the same thing and the um, West Coast Eagles will get the same thing. But While not showing any sympathy on the field in their recent walloping of the Brisbane Bears at the SCG, Carroll does feel for the problems they'll face in the coming years. They'll find it hard settling in a new place. You know, it does take a long, long while to sort out. So, you know, all the best to them. And I'm sure if they hang with it, hang in there, they'll do well in the future. Having lived through some of the problems that the Brisbane Bears are going to face this year, what advice would you have for them? Uh, just keep your head up, you know, keep plugging away. You know, the breaks will come your way if you keep putting in. And uh, they've got a great, what I believe to be a great coach up there in Peter Knights. You know, time will tell how good he is, but I'm sure if all the players get behind him and the local community up there gets in behind them, they'll do well in the end. Make it at top pace everything you do. Now, come on, let it go. A major factor in the recent success of the Swans is the tough yet down-to-earth genius of coach Tom Hafey, who's had to keep the players' minds on the field and off the stage. Our main job is to make certain that we're not caught up in any of that and we just put our head down and win matches. At a two-day training camp at Singleton Army Base recently, Hafey left no doubt as to what he means by getting on with a job. You clench your fist? and you aim at the blokes of Donald region and you punch him as hard as you can. <laughs> Along with the razzmatazz of private ownership of the Swans last year came an influx of big name players. But with the introduction of the salary cap by the VFL, the Swans are now looking to their own backyard for the Greg Williams and the Bernard Tuies of the future. Hopefully it's going to come from New South Wales, Sydney and New South Wales. I think at this particular stage on our list of 50 players there's something like 30 of them New South Wales boys. I know at this stage there's only about seven or eight of them who are in our top side, uh, but I'm certain over the years that will change. And for Captain Carroll, that means good news for the seasons ahead. The future's very rosy, you know, as I said, providing we keep winning games, and uh, that's the only way we're going to keep support and uh, have the code growing is by us, you know, bringing a flag uh, to Sydney. But it's not only on the field that Carroll will be striving to achieve that goal. In his full-time job as development officer for the club, the boy from Albury will travel the state, along with assistant coach Craig Davis, spreading the word to more than 20,000 kids in coaching clinics like this one in Yass. In this area, once it's in there, we make a nice little basket for it. Good, That's handball the ball well back. Done. Good, well done. Come on, Tucker, up you go, jump. Well done. It's going to feel funny when you start off, but now's the time to start. Our elbows are not locked. If Australian rules is ever going to succeed as a truly national sport, then it's in areas like this rugby league stronghold in rural New South Wales that the swan stars of the future are going to have to be found and converted. As one of seven full-time preachers of the code in New South Wales, Dennis Carroll doesn't seem to be having too much trouble doing just that. That's all right, that's good, exactly how I want it. Well done. Well, I had once played rugby league and I never touched the ball, so I tried this and you nearly always touch the ball in the game. By the time they make a scrum and finish the scrum, we'd, we'd probably make a goal by then. Australian rules and they should be all Australia should play. Yeah. And even hardline rugby league men like Jason agree. Everybody falls on top of you then you get sin bin. So you think you think you'd like to play Aussie rules now? Yes. I think it'd be a good game. Good. So Dennis, just how important are these trips to the country for the future of the Swans? Uh, they're most important for us because we look at the country areas as eventually being our recruiting areas, you know, with the the way prices have gone nowadays, it's just so expensive to buy players and with the salary cap and, uh, you know, these are going to be our breeding grounds for sure. I get a great kick, it's a really good buzz to come down here and uh, 
seeing kids uh, try a new game, even if it's not new, just trying the game and, um, you know, getting a, a response just by looking at their skills and watching the improvement from them. On behalf of the Swans, thanks very much. Thank you. Doesn't anybody like... The Hawks are winners and still champs as the Blues are again humiliated in the grand final replay at Prince's Park. Wait for it. Goal. A long kick, a very long ball. And the Blues rival as most famous club, Collingwood, decapitated by a vibrant Sydney Swans out at Victoria Park. Good evening and welcome to our first Saturday night football grandstand. Two hours of replays, interviews and discussion coming your way tonight, as there will be at this time every Saturday night during the 1987 season. Well, a day of infamy on opening day for the two most famous clubs in the country, Carlton and Collingwood. And a day when Darrell Baldock's dazzle turned to despair down at Moorabbin as the Saints saw a 33-point half-time lead whittled away and eventually snatched a one-point Geelong victory at Moorabbin. The winners on the second day of VFL football for the season at VFL Park, Essendon by 59 points against Footscray, Hawthorne by 45 over Carlton at Princes Park, Sydney by a massive 91 against a very disappointing Collingwood, Melbourne by 39, a great start to the Demons over last year's third place getter Fitzroy, and Geelong, dramatic one-point winners against St Kilda at Moorabbin. Last night, the Brisbane Bears in their debut a superb 33-point win over North Melbourne at the MCG. Warwick Kappa was the star in the big sticks today, kicking nine goals. Tremendous opening day effort. He started in great style last year against North Melbourne, and he's done it again in 87. Alan Izard, Essendon's fast-running sharpshooter, kicked seven. Jason Dunstall of Hawthorne carried on from where he left off in the grand final with six. And Fitzroy's Doug Barwick, a gallant effort in a losing score, kicking five goals for Fitzroy. Well, first up, the grand final replay out at Prince's Park and uh, Hawthorne by 45 points against a very disappointing Carlton. Our commentators out there are Jeff Leake and former Carlton Premiership captain and coach John Nichols. And Big John, if I can put the first one to you, although I suppose you've got divided loyalties because you have coached Hawthorne's uh, Ruckman in recent times, you must be a fairly disappointed former Blue today. Got a problem? OK, we can't go out to uh, Prince's Park. So, well, let's just uh, talk to Jeff Leake and uh, hear from him about what happened to the Blues, the once mighty Blues. Well, at Princess Park, the uh, co-tenants had a replay of last year's grand final, but the result wasn't quite as heavily in favour of Hawthorne, but the Hawks ran out comfortable winners by 45 points. But the Blues did fight on in the final term. It was their best scoring quarter where they kicked six goals to Hawthorne's four. But a 45-point margin to the Hawks, who deserved to win because at half time uh, we thought that there was going to be uh, an absolute whitewash but there was some fight in the blues but they couldn't match the hawthorne running game and this is the department that was missing from carlton today uh, they just didn't get it together and when they do later in the season i'm sure that they'll be much better but the hawks would walk off today with the points and top of the walk because uh, uh, it was a top effort from them they've lost nothing from last year they seem to have that easy run-on game starting from the back line they did well up, uh, out of the center today and they're small players medium-sized players uh, and big players seem to, to hold sway during the day. The star in the goal kicking uh, went to Jason Dunstall. Uh, he was a top performer today with six. The other goal kickers, uh, four Horts, and there's plenty of them. John Platten had a wonderful day. He kicked four. John Kennedy kicked three. We had two to Peter Curran, uh, two to Michael Tuck. Not a good game for him, particularly in the second quarter when he had nine kicks for the term. We had Robert uh, Dipper Domenico and uh, we had Russell Green. The Blues' top contender was Kernahan with four goals. Silvani was a surprise. He kicked three when he was moved to the forward line uh, 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 late in the game. Hey, John, uh, what, uh, what went wrong with Carlton? Well, I think, uh, Jeff, that uh, Hawthorne were just too, too strong and disciplined. Carlton started well. They, uh, they gave away several uh, penalties in the first quarter, which brought uh, Hawthorne back into the game. Madden started well and faded out of it. Uh, but uh, the whole whole crunch was until Dermot Brereton went off. Uh, Hawthorne had a very good forward line. Curran was uh, sensational. D Brereton was damaging. Dunstall, even though he was quite early, came in and took over the game later on. But uh, whenever they took the ball forward, they kicked the ball. They kicked goals at ease. And uh, every every goal that Carlton scored, they had a battle and fight, and then eventually get there 
But, uh, you know, Hawthorne, as you say, haven't lost very much. Carlton uh, certainly are under man with three or four of their good players out, but nevertheless, um, I think uh, their two new ones were pretty quiet, but uh, they'll, at least they've, uh, Naily and Satori will have uh, had a hard game to start with, but I think, um, you know, they, they did fight the game out, but really after half-time it was a foregone conclusion that just matter, just how much Hawthorne won by, and the fact that they only won by 45 points, um, you know, Carlton did fight the game out as far as that goes. A couple of things to ask you, some positional moves today. Rhys Jones playing on the back line, can you see a future there for him? Well, I, I'm a great rap for Rhys Jones as a player, but uh, obviously uh, he will make it wherever he sets his mind to make it, but uh, uh, the umpires certainly were very hard on him early. They gave... Uh, three or four uh, penalties against him, 15-yard uh, penalties and this type of thing, which uh, have obviously got Reese in the gun. Uh, but uh, uh, if Reese is going to give those free kicks or penalties away in the back line, he's got, it's, it's going to be very dangerous for Carlton. OK, so you're saying that Carlton are in a very dangerous situation. Uh, but the Hawks started off the season well. It's very important to win your first match, particularly against your, your, your arch rivals. They did run out comfortable winners today. Dermot Brereton was a man who came off. I don't think that he, uh, he's seriously injured. But the Hawks by 45 points. And then it's back to the studio with Tim Lane. Thanks, Geoffrey. We'll have uh, more information on the match and our first replay from Princess Park coming up in just a few minutes' time. Speaking of Rhys Jones, it appeared watching the match from our videotape section that he did have his number taken during the game. We'll have details on reports, injuries and various other matters that we haven't given you so far in our headlines uh, just after six o'clock in a little under an hour's time from now. Well now let's go down to the winners rooms. The Hawks away to a great start in 1987. They've been in the last four grand finals. Some trauma at the club uh, between September 1986 and late March 1987, but that's all forgotten now. Gary Bacanara back played in the reserves today and the Hawks great winners by a similar margin to the one which they cruised home with in the grand final. It was 42 points on grand final day last year, today 45 at Princes Park. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Let's go down to the Hawthorne rooms at Princes Park where Dick Mason is with Hawk skipper Michael Tuck. <laughs> Michael, congratulations, 45 point win, uh, that's the way to start the season. Actually it was very good, we know, I think it was a bit surprising that we ended up winning by that much because we hadn't been playing real well, especially the night game against Melbourne, but we thought Carlton might have been a bit whipped up after last year, but it worked out very well for us today. Well it seemed to me uh, that they didn't give much uh, opposition after quarter time. Well I think they did, or well, they tried obviously, but I think that actually we played very well today, everything seemed to go right for us. So. Um, sort of makes it a lot harder on the opposition. You must have been very satisfied with your own performance. Oh, I started off a bit slow in the first quarter, but everything <laughs> fell into place after that, so yeah, I was happy with it in the end. And you'd be very happy with uh, Jason Dunsell's performance, six goals first up? Well, it was very good. I think um, his tackling out of the back line when the player was running away in quarter cover, we got goals out of those, so that's just a bonus too, which lifts the whole side. The Hawthorne running game, uh, very good again from the half-back line. Obviously, uh, you work harder at a training. Well, the you sort of got that style of game. It's a style nowadays we all use, so you've got to be a versatile type of player too, and you've got to be able to run nowadays, otherwise you miss out. What sort of discipline is involved in uh, keeping a forward line as open as Hawthorne's appears to be all the time? It's mainly what the match committee decide how to play the players and where to play them, but then it's up to the players to keep out, not to try and be goal hungry themselves, and then try and just help each other to kick the goals. It's not so much how many goals individuals kicks is how many goals a team kicks. So I think they try and help each other and just keep out of it. Yeah. How about Hawthorne small men? They made uh, a very valuable contribution today. Well, Johnny Platten kicked a lot of goals. I thought Richard Lovich played very well around the ground. He bought in very well. So, well, they were a strong part of our side last year and looks like they might be again this year. Or looks like they will be again this year. It just seems that uh, the Hawthorne guys just keep running straight at the ball. Is that, uh, does, it, does it rub off? Oh, when you get said before the start of the game, if you don't have a go, you get taken off, so it might help a bit like that. But I think it's just built into a bloke. If he's going to do it, he's going to do it. So that's just the way it is, yeah. Did you really expect a 45-point victory? What uh, would you have guessed before the game might have been uh, a winning margin? No, I basically reckon if we had a one by a goal or two goals, it would have been very good. You just sort of don't know these things. Looking forward to unfurling that uh, premiership uh, pennant, the first home game? Oh, it should be good, but it's sort of probably stir the opposition up a bit too, so it makes it a little bit harder. Right, you're out of the night series. Um, how do you face, uh, what's your preparation from now on? Any, anything different uh, as the weeks go by? No, basically back to what we did last year. We trained Monday, Tuesday and Thursday nights. And then that's basically it, really. 
Well, thanks very much, Michael. Congratulations oh, uh, on the game and well played, Hawthorne. Well, done, Michael. well, Tucky, just about the eldest statesman among VFL footballers now. I think that might very well be the case, but uh, still never one to get too excited about anything much. He's been there and done that just about a million times, it seems. And even on grand final night last year, I remember in our uh, temporary studio at the MCG, even though he'd uh, done what every young boy dreams of, led a team to a VFL Premiership, not too excited, just the same old unflappable tucky. Well, now out to Victoria Park, where S uh, Sydney Swans took Collingwood apart to the tune of a 91-point victory, and it must be the Magpies' worst start in many a long VFL season. Out there in the commentary box for us today were Ian Robertson and Bernie Quinlan, and Robbo, it looks black for the, uh, the Magpies, not much white among it. Well, uh, that's exactly right, Tim. The Swans were tremendous. They were very, very disciplined. Uh, much the same, uh, listening to Jeff summarise the Carlton and uh, Hawthorne match, the Swans were tremendous. Uh, at the centre bounces, big ironmonger, Williams boring in, uh, Neagle and Healy, tremendous. Their back line led by their captain, Dennis Carroll, and up forward, the absolutely magnificent Warwick Kappa uh, took some spectacular marks played on, even hand pass once to Healy to give a goal, and they were quite magnificent. Collingwood, inexperienced, perhaps the difference between the two sides. Collingwood with a lot of young players. Uh, Hrysalakis was good. Young Collins, uh, young Brown, sorry, number 26, did a good job. Uh, but apart from that, I must mention Starcevic. Uh, Bernie may comment later, uh, his was a good game, but they were miserable, Collingwood, and the scores really do indicate the difference between the two sides. The Swans a magnificent victory here at Victoria Park. Uh, Bernie, perhaps you'd like to comment on Starcevic and what do Collingwood have to look forward to? Yes, well really it was a pretty bleak day for Collingwood all around. Um, Lee Matthews and the Collingwood players would get no joy from that performance. Uh, the Sydney Swans were just far too strong right from the word go. Uh, they were led by Ironmonger as you said in the ruck. Coleman did a good job also when he came on. Kappa marked everything that came his way. Um, the few pluses for Collingwood, I'd say, as you said, was Starkovich, uh, the new player from Western Australia, who took 10 good marks on the forward line. Um, young Brown, was it? Yes, Young Brown made a, made a very good opening. Uh, he had 13 kicks and was one of the best players. Turner did a good job in the back line. But apart from that, it was a very poor performance by the whole Collingwood side. The, uh, as far as Collingwood are concerned, I think that uh, they would be looking for the steadiness of players like Paul Morwood, who started the game on the interchange bench, and uh, it was very difficult to follow that uh, he didn't come on until well into the game, and he added a little bit of bite. But the Swans, uh, I mentioned Healy, Mitchell and Murphy, they're smaller players. They had good players all over the ground, and it really was a one-sided affair. Uh, the Swans were just too good and too experienced. Collingwood certainly have something to look forward to with their younger players. On the stats we have, it seems that Kappa was just about the star of the day. Uh, Bernie, I better throw to you the one about his kicking. It looks as though it might have improved a little bit. I guess if you got hold of him for a week or two, you might be able to turn him into a 10 or 12 goal full forward if he could make the most of every opportunity. Yeah, well, he did. He kicked very well today, Tim. He made the most of every opportunity that came his way. But um, maybe if I got hold of him, he'd kick a few, few more behinds the way I was kicking last year. But it was a very impressive performance by Kappa. Um, he kicked seven goals up to half time. He only got two in the second half. And uh, that was because of the move of Gafer onto Kappa, and uh, that was probably a little bit late coming. But uh, I suggested that a little bit earlier in the piece. But he's a very good player, Gafer, and he worries a lot of players out of, uh, puts them off the game. Okay, well, look, I've temporarily lost sound from Victoria Park, so uh, I won't respond to anything that's just been said, lest I make a, a fool of myself. Let's go down to the uh, winners' rooms now. Tom Hafey, of course, a Victoria Park veteran, having coached Collingwood into three consecutive premierships then went to the Sydney Swans, or to Geelong, uh, after being sacked at Collingwood, and after a couple of years at Geelong, up to Sydney, where at his fourth club, he really looks set to uh, have some great success. And I get the feeling that Sydney might be genuine premiership contenders this year, learning from uh, their experience last year when they made the finals, but didn't win a match in September. So, let's go down and hear from Tom Hafey as he speaks with Peter G. Right. Tom, the uh, cup of tea must taste very nice. Could have they played any better first up? Well, we are probably a little bit disappointed in the last quarter. They scored six goals to our five, so I suppose uh, we've got to do a bit of work, I guess. 
was that just relaxing or did Collingwood bounce back? Oh, I guess they bounced back, but I was a little bit disappointed that our players did relax to some extent and they got the ball out the centre and I suppose, you know, to their credit, they're on a young side, they did fight back. What about uh, the play up until three-quarter time? You, you seem to team together so well. Uh, do you think having a balanced side, perhaps the most balanced in the league, has helped you? Yes, although I suppose uh, you can't get a really true indication when you win so well and we're a lot of goals in front. But I suppose in fairness to Collingwood, they did have about 10 new players, so I think it was too many to start off with the first match of the year and all together. So but looking at our own team, I was really pleased that uh, they did uh, control the game for most of the time, but you know it's a long way to go, and so I don't get carried away with it. Warwick Kappa's performance was a brilliant individual one, but I thought I saw him do team things there that we mightn't have seen last season. Is, uh, have you noticed an improvement in his game in that regard? Yes, well, he's a good boy and he really tries hard for the team. I've got to be honest here, I think he's tried to do these things in the past. They may not have come off today, they did come off, and I was pleased to see him may not be goal hungry, but give the ball to other people to kick goals, and naturally enough, I was pleased that he marked and kicked so well himself. So, uh, any injuries out of the game today? I'm not quite certain on that, but I think Dennis Carroll might have got a bit of a knock on the knee, and uh, Craig Holden might have got a, something similar, but at this stage, I'm not certain. And do you think it's perhaps helped you with two other teams from interstate coming in this year and a little less scrutiny on the one team from interstate pre-season? Well, yeah, well, that's possible too because I know that we've been under everybody's eye, the fact that we're televised all the time. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've just got to not worry about anybody else and just make certain that we perform ourselves. All right, Tom, a great performance first up today. Congratulations. Thanks, Peter. Thanks very much, man. Tremendous start for the Sydney Swans. I think Tom Hafey might really have a sniff of it in the nostrils in 1987 after being thereabouts in 86 when Sydney were up with the Hawthorns and Carltons but not quite able to match them when it really counted in the finals. Well, speaking of those two teams, it's replay time. The grand final replay, in fact, at Princes Park between the Hawks and the Blues. Co-tenants these days with Fitzroy out of that ground beside the university. So let's go out to the first bounce. Our commentators, Dick Mason, Jeff Leake and John Nichols. This park has uh, been ideal, Dick. It's a real picture. Everything's brand spanking new. And that's a brand spanking new bounce. Not a good one. It's, it's conditions are good, although it rained all morning. A swab boots the Hawks into attack. Platt misread that one. So Vardy, who's playing at full back on Dunstall, clears. Langford marks between half-back and centre is shoved down by uh, Kernahan and will pick up a 15-metre penalty, which brings him across the centre. There's Dermot Brereton and Curran, who's out there. Kennedy looked very half-hearted as he went for that one. Bradley, upset by E. That's Strauss, in possession, takes the first free half-back flank for Carlton on the uh, inner edge. Strauss from that half-back line towards the centre wing. Pack rises high, off hands to Russo of Hawthorne, up towards that half forward flank. Deb Brereton underneath the ball, punched by Dean to uh, Carlton hands and across the line and out of bounds before Reese Jones, the Reese Jones, the blonde, uh, can gain possession for the Blues. One minute gone, first term, and Hawthorne in attack. Madden wins his way to the front, ineffective tap down, picked up uh, for Hawthorne by Kennedy, his kick smothered to Alvin, off hands to Road for Carlton, sends them to the centre wing, uncontested mark virtually for Raymond Jenke for Hawthorne. Not too many games, as he swings it across there to Russell Green. Ooh, Robertson skidded through, well, you get an idea how much rain this ground has taken. A floater, Silvani, two minds, someone must have said leave it, Dean's in trouble there, the tap out. Burton fumbling badly, he's caught. Russo. It's a goal from the first shot of the matches. Burton's dumped by Dean after that goal has gone through, and umpire Cameron has little word to them, and tempers are a little bit uh, ragged at the moment. Certainly a very nervous start from both sides. Uh, a lot of fumbling, poor kicking at this stage, and I think certainly it'll take another five or ten minutes to settle down, but Carlton at this stage uh, can't afford to get too far behind Hawthorne. Russo with a quick snapshot out of the pack and right through. Play starts in the centre once again with Madden first hand to the ball. Taps it towards Dipper Domenico. He puts Johnson down with a push in the back and the ex-Carlton captain number seven will get the free kick and 15 metres for somebody running across the mark. A Hawthorne defender running across the mark. He signalled to go on. Johnson, however, taking his time, goes the long torpedo punt towards the teeth of goal. A shepherd there allows the ball to go through for a behind. 
So first score to Carlton. They are one point, trailing Hawthorne six points. Here's Chris Bew, the Hawks uh, full-back. Lankin can, can play in that position as well as he kicks a long shot out of the league. Now, he's somewhat of an enigma, Rodney Eade. Gave it away in 85, couldn't get a game. He came back with all his might to last year. He's a veteran in the Hawthorne lineup. still has stacks of pace and a throw-in on the outer wing. Kernahan number four in ruck for Carlton. Backhands the ball, comes down towards uh, Dipper Domenico, the Brownlow medalist. He can't gain possession. Johnson goes in, gets tripped over, ball goes off hands and out for a throw-in. University side uh, of the Carlton ground, the southern side of the ground. And number 44, Madden in front, gets both hands to the ball but doesn't tap it down effectively. Right at his feet, not good ruck play, John Nichols. No, certainly he has to be in front, but uh, Madden after a poor year this year, Carlton are expecting big things of him this year. Cameron bounces again, Madden not first handed the ball, it was dear that time. Picking it up is Schwab for Hawthorne, number 30. David Rees-Jones there to save for the Blues. And those hooks for Richard, I would say, come from the Hawthorne fans, and they well remember his, uh, his ire in uh, matches. Good smother there. Schwab again. Unmarked. Unmarked. Too easy. And Burton can kick the 50 metres. He's going to kick from that line. A little bit of hanky-panky against Dean. Will certainly uh, give Burton a score. And it'll be far easier to kick a goal from 30 metres in front of than it would be from 55. Now, it's Dean on the mark. The Hawks uh, have the score on the board at the moment. One goal to the Blues. One behind as Burton comes in for number two. And he's missed. Not a good effort, Burton, but everything was given to you. Well, it's obviously early, early in the game. The umpires are going to be very dynamite on this 15-yard wasting time rule and uh, the penalties are being issued very quickly. Back into play and looking for no one in particular. Deer first handed the ball but couldn't hold on to it. Off Madden's boot. Deer comes into game possession but knocks it on. Pass tuck. Chance there for Carlton to win possession through uh, Dean. Knocks it forward again and it's off hands for another throw in. Centre wing northern side of the ground this time. It used to be the press box side, but they pulled the press box down. Yes, but it'll be magnificent next year, Dick. The concrete structure there where the boundary up by throwing in the football. Madden. Uh, oh, kick is, but Bradley's being tagged pretty well. Leverage is right with him at this day. So the kick has gone out of play, further towards Carlton's goal, but on the Brunswick side of the ground. Ruckman lining up again. Carlton get hands to the ball, and it looks like Meldrum. He gets clear to Johnson. Quick kick by him off his uh, preferred left boot. A flyer behind. A chance for Hawthorne if they're strong enough, and they are. Ball close to the line. A chance for a scoop, a tackle. Ogier goes in and gives away the free kick for a push. Number 34 for Carlton. Infringing there against Rodney Ede, who goes dangerously across the face of goal. But that's where the lead came from, Loveridge, playing as usual in the long sleeve Guernsey. Loveridge out to the wing on the university side. Brereton flies but can't hold on to it. And there's a Carlton mark. Oops! Tom Alvin a little upset, number 31, and gets the 15-metre penalty. John Kennedy, number 34, backing away on the mark. And the long-haired halfback flanker from Carlton about to drive the Blues forward from the centre wing. Not a good kick, but two-position. Kernahan marks on his chest, diving over. 45 metres out from goal, a difficult angle. If he kicks this, the scores are level. Very interesting at the five-minute mark of this first quarter. What a good crowd at, at uh, Prentice Park today to have a look at the rematch of last year's grand finalists. And the Hawks, of course, canned at home. Kernahan wasn't a good player in that, uh, that match either. Captain this year from 50 metres. It's a good-looking kick, though. It's made it. Thanks, that. It's a great time. Top kick from the captain. And it's a team builder from Steve Kernahan. And the scores are level just a tick over the five minute mark. And Kernahan's looking in good form. A great mark. John, that's yes. the tough side to kick them from at Carlton, isn't it? Yes, it is hard to kick out there. But still, uh, newly appointed captain. That's a uh, tremendous Philip uh, for Carlton and Kernahan because uh, clubs uh, nowadays uh, want their captains to play well. And Kernahan's under a lot of pressure to do so. One goal to Kernahan for Carlton, one goal to Russo for Hawthorne. And are behind each. The scores level at seven points apiece. Madden number 44 in ruck. First hand to it again. Carlton bustled off the ball. Uh, the ball is swung away there by Green. A kick off the ground. Goes towards Alvin. He uh, can't win it. 
finally it does come to hand through Mildrum, but his kick is ineffective. A long stoop for uh, Madden to Johnson. Johnson to half forward, knocked away by Hawthorne, and a chance there for Jenky. He gets the ball to Mew, who's nearly upset. It's Carlton's Madden in the van here, handles it well, offloads to Shine coming down the ground. Shine looks further afield for Kernahan again, off the hands once again. A chance now for a free kick in Kernahan's way, and umpire Russo has pulled that one out of the pack. He's shooting to Langford. Chris Langford, the man yeah. standing beside the umpire, umpire Russo, who shares the same family name as the Hawthorne centre man. Stephen Kernahan, the Carlton captain, straight in front and 30 metres out. Could post his second and Carlton's second goal. Eight minutes gone. First term. Kernahan kicks straight. And the Blues take the lead. Kernahan's second goal. There's Shine bursting out of the centre. Yes, uh, great strength. Uh, a lifting goal for Carlton. Kernahan has always been a very accurate kick, a very balanced kick at goal, and certainly that was no exception. Good delivery by Shine. Right to the intended target. Kernahan backing up. And there was, was over the shot. Start of play again. Cameron bounces the ball and Madden, supreme in the air, gets it away. Carlton in trouble. Chance there for Loveridge, who breaks clear after two twists. Goes to the lead by Dunstall. Silvani with a big punch from behind. Ball hits the ground. Platt and dangerous for Hawthorne. But the refuge of the boundary sought by Shine. And he's given away a free kick for a push in the back. Russo, um, Platten rather, getting into Shine's back. A bad kick comes to hand off the ground. Chance once again for Rode. Rode to centre wing on the university side. Dean. It's a strong mark by Dean as well. On the halfback flank. One of Carlton's never get in type of players. Had a good year last year as well. A bit of trouble with his Strauss trying to pick it up as he gets through the crowd now. Across to Robertson. He's in the centre. Now the handball's put at the moment. Blues Johnson, or a grubber. Big Madden did well here to pick it up from six foot ten. The kick, where's Kernahan? Oh, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Ogier, short pass. Motley. Motley unattended. Good thinking by Ogier. Quick thinking, and it barely covered the ten metres. Well, there's a galaxy of stars from interstate when you add a couple of into the side uh, today, there's Naley and also Sartori. It kicks a long one from an acute angle. It's wide of the target, it's a behind, but the Blues have their noses in front. They're, they're leading uh, 14 to 7. Coming up to the 11 minute mark, first term. The university side, the outer side, looking for Deer, over the top, almost. 39 is Abbott, pushed off the ball. Chance here for Satori, finds Naley. Hand pass not accurate to Evans, but he could run onto the ball. He gets it back, in trouble, but couldn't keep it in. Carlton in attack. The ball about 20 metres around from there near behind post. Kernahan in ruck, a chance here for Meldrum. Kernahan again, snap, out on the full. He's going to be a handful, John. Uh, Langford having a lot of bother trying to contain him. Yes, well, Kernahan's got his confidence up at the moment and uh, winning in the rucks uh, with Madden. And if that's, that's the case, they've got a chance to keep the pressure on Hawthorne. Sun shining in Melbourne after a showery morning. Ground a bit wet. Russo is the man to kick the ball out of the back pocket. Kernahan, gee, good mark. You don't want to let him get a run at it. Here's a handball. This is Swap running through the centre, pounding the ball into the turf. It's a bit wet. And he's told to go. He's run a good 30 metres to Brereton. Almost a mark. Dean on his feet. Dunstall. Silvani with great skill. Here's Kennedy. Backwards to Ede. Bradley right with him, but he gets his kick in. Into the pocket of Curran. Now, Curran, the Hawk seven points down, kicks the bear, it's a beauty. Good thinking, Dermot. Great play, Dean. Kennedy, have to go backwards. Take it from me by Strauss. 
Bradley's out of touch. He can't get a finger to it. And here he's there on hand, but he couldn't take the ball away. And the two blondes are having it off behind the play. Dermot Brereton. Well, that's more, who's more of a bottle blonde than anything else. And David Rhys Jones is a fair yeah. dinkum one. Certainly two fiery ones. But still two good players, both of them. A bit of sorting out being done by the men in white. No notebooks in sight. Russo says, I'm going to bounce it. Dean laying down the law to umpire Cameron. Cameron is having none of it. Madden is there, drawing lines on the ground with his feet. Pouring like a bull. And the free kick is going to Dermot Brereton. Well, Perrin took the mark. Uh, Dust-up was behind play, wasn't it? Uh, Yes, the correct decision would have been a ball up. Well, I think we went for some new umpiring uh, rulings this year, John. They sounded up pretty well. well Brer, the hook seven points behind. A good kick. It's an accurate kick, what's more important. It's a pressure kick. And the Blues lead by one point. 14 to 13. And they played 14 minutes in the first half. And already, David Rhys-Jones is getting a severe talking to by Brad Shine. Rhys-Jones, Shine really laid down the law. Here's that uh, incident of play once again. A little bit of... Uh, well, Brereton had all the point there, and then Rhys-Jones came in, and the rest is history. In the centre once again, Madden, first hand of the ball. Carlton uh, emerged with it through Roberts, and his kick, not too good. Dipper Domenico a chance. Swing round shot by Bernie Evans, floating. Chance for the Hawthorne fullback. Ball on the ground. Satori gives it to Meldrum behind. Very deceptive player, Molly Meldrum. John, uh, not many people realise he's about six foot one and he's got a bit of weight behind him and uh, he moves very quickly and he's tough. And uh, what's delightful for Carlton people is that he's a homegrown boy. He walked in, didn't he? That's as, uh, correct. Princess yes. Hill, isn't he? He looks like he's uh, yeah. taking short steps and going slowly, but he still gets there. A kick out to a man in the pocket is Tuck and it's his first touch for the veteran uh, Hawks great skipper for a, a, a number of years. And uh, tucked away there from Green by Meldrum. And that's fair enough, it's in the centre of the ground. Kernahan's by himself, Lankford's giving him too much latitude, but Meldrum goes for him. Good mark. It is a good mark. Bernie Evans. Got one on the beak as well. The ability of playing in front certainly always pays off on the forward line. Yes, that was a little bit of a drop short. Evans, 35 metres out, slight angle. Cross the face of goal, bad kick Bernie Evans, one behind. Coming up to the 16 minute mark, Carlton 16, Hawthorne 13. Two goals four to two goals one. Leads from that bunched uh, players uh, group at centre half forward. Tipped over the back by Dipper Domenico, good play to Green. Hurried kick towards Brereton. Off hands, Curran the chance, dive on it, here's Alvin. No, oh, plenty of courage, that man. Still plays the ball, tackled without the footy, play on. Ball knocked clear by Grasp. A little bit of pace there, Deer. Oops, with no, where Angels fear to tread. And breaking away is Rogue for Carlton. Sees Kernahan unguarded, on the chest. 51, 52 metres out. Great mark, Kernahan, under difficulty. Well, he's kicked, kicked two goals uh, at this stage. It's not a bad kick to Motley. Had it, lost it. Oh, crikey, uh, Ozier was in there. Desperate Hawks in defence. I'll have to do something quick. He's janky. Good play, Platt. Look at him go. He'll run right away off from Sartori. Platt with uh, much pace. Up to Brereton. And also Dean. There's a good match. Brereton and Dean, a couple of fireheads, and Reese Jones not far away from them either for the Blues, and a throw in Hawthorne's half forward line. Right in front of the Hawthorne stand. 14 is Deer, 44 Madden. I mean, it's anybody's out the back. Road, number 41, getting the kick. Dipper Domenico can't bring it to hand. Jenky, number one, comes back to it, tidies up. Schwab, back to Dipper Domenico, found it very hot. Look out, you're in trouble. Play on, no the ball, holding the ball, Wayne Johnson, the advantage paid as Carlton streamed forward, Motley, taking it comfortably, too comfortably, play on, 
Whistle. Holding the ball. He had to give that. No sure. talking there, I fancy. Yeah, I tell you, did he ran out of steam and uh, Langford just finds, just measured off Swab there. Swab's a handy link player. Oops. From half back to half forward. Ooh. That was airs in there for the Hawks. Good play, Madden. Good clearing kick to Kernahan. Man in front, Russo, much shorter player. Looks for the kick. Oh, it sits Deer. Deer quickly across uh, the back line now. Langford kicks the ball, clears it. Perron with his eyes on the ball all the way. Reese chance his opponent. Had a go at a head high tackle. It's okay as the players tap each other. Out of camera. I think the, I think the free kick might have been for that front yeah. on charge, that front on tackle as he was going for the ball. Interference before the ball was within five metres. I think that'll be the official explanation. But it's Peter Curran. The lead from Dunstall is ignored. Point of the square. Kicks into the pocket for Brereton. Oh, Brereton, good mark. Been up miles too early. Brereton looking for a lead. Has a very sharp angle. Not his preferred kicking foot. Close to the boundary. Sharp angle between the posts. Dermot Brereton could put the Hawks in front. Drop punt on its way. Cross the face for a behind. Yes, well, Carlton is certainly uh, missing Dorovich at centre half back because uh, I don't think Dean is quite good enough to hold Brereton when Brereton's on, on his game, which looks like being very dangerous today. One goal, two to Brereton. Uh, Brad Shine boots the ball, looking for Molly Meldrum. Alvin North, good, good clean pair of hands. It was a good mark in front of uh, Russell Green for the Hawks, and Meldrum gets a call down the wing. Motley's the man. Tackled by Janky, gets the handball off. Not a good handball. Johnson and, uh, appealed for out on the full, but the boundary umpire was having none. Now let's have a look at Madden's ruck work. Got a hand to it, nothing positive. Whoops. Here's a chance for Johnson. Beautiful pass. Oh. Slipping to the right position. The Hawks' uh, defence is simply playing it, but the ball came very badly down to Sartori. Interested in this uh, move by Hawthorne to congregate at centre half forward, the the modern style, and then burst out. But uh, the Hawthorne fullback goes towards Deer. Madden is there, pushes him over. Play on the call. Motley for Carlton to tidy up number two. Oh, a murderous punt to Madden. <laughs> it's over a the line. A hospital punt. Yeah, it was. And, uh, it's yeah. A, over the line. Two careless mistakes by Motley getting caught with the ball, taking too much time in a, in a kick like that. He's got to keep the ball in play. Well, there's a kick in, uh, and Dipper's really out of touch. Uh, and how do you get back a good pick up? Karen's a chance, and Brereton as well. Reese Jones in front will go the punch. Someone's got the way yes, down. Mate. on the bottom of the pack. Cameron rushes in the umpire. Reese Jones is on the end of all the uh, verbatim. He's not the popular ball of the ups, and more with the Carlton camp. A name a in kick. the book. Oh, I can't believe that. Is that we stop that time wasting? It must have been verbal. Rhys Jones in the book. I wonder if it'll affect his play, John. I well, hope not, but uh, I also hope that this isn't the uh, criteria for the rest of the year with the umpiring style of um, 15 yards and reports. Close post. The moving finger writes and having writ moves on. <laughs> nor all thy piety nor wit could cancel half a line of it. It's yeah. in the book, son. You're rather rested. And we'll it. see you Monday night. <laughs> That's what he said. Silvani leads. Bad, not favoured by the bounce. Dunstall for Hawthorne. Deliberate. Kicks it back to the leading Brereton. Madden's boot. Collides with Brereton. Crowd cheers. Robertson for Carlton to Johnston. Hand pass over Milgram's head. Opens it up for Hawthorne. He picked up by Deer. Good tackle, Johnston. Tuck goes in. Madden sits on somebody and gives away the free kick. Some of the boys out there really haven't hit their best at this stage. Ooh, Downfield. Yeah, Curran at the free kick. Relayed. Johnson a late and foolish tackle on Rodney Eade. All of a sudden, Curran's become uh, another 15 metre penalty. 15 dick, it's more like about four or five, so it's weak umpiring. Either 15 or it's nothing at all. Five kicks for Peter Curran. 
and he lines up from 45 degrees and 45 meters. It's swinging back. Wait for it. Behind. Good attempt. Two behinds to Karen. The Reese Jones game has gone to pieces a bit, uh, and with his name in the book as well, uh, won't help. Shine gets a lead and the thank from Meldrum. Got a nice necessary Ooh. break on Green there. Good play, Molly Meldrum. Road runs down. Silvani with a nice mark on the halfback flank. Strong tackle there by Dunstall. That's wasting time. Road runs well. Goes again. A left footer. Oh, gee. Was, uh, Rob, uh, Ozier takes it. A short kick in now to half forward. Hey, Bernie Evans. He was lucky. He got it on the rebound. And nowhere to go. Strong tackle put on him by Tuck and hassled him. Johnson smothered. His platen. Good work there. Kick out of nothing. Down towards the wing. It's threaded through arms and legs. Shine again. This time into the centre. Dippy out of many go. Oh, he's short of uh, inches. Swap. Been a good player so far. Dipper this time. Hot potato back to E. Sees a man in the middle. It's a Carlton man. Gives it straight to him. It's Glasgow. First touch. Just on. Replacing Strutch. Lovely long kick by David Glasgow. High Carlton hands. And the ball's on the ground for the inevitable bounce down. Carlton in attack. 17 Michael Tuck for Hawthorne. And 17 for Carlton is Mark Naley. Yet to really touch the footy. Struggle for possession. Johnson number seven for Carlton. Ball on the ground again. Chance here off the ground for Naley. If he's good enough, swings the boot at the ball. Dives after it and it's gone through for a behind. Another one to Carlton. They lead by two points. Two goals, six to two goals, four. 18 points to 16. Madden for Carlton. Supreme in the air. Carlton back into attack once again through Bradley. Off hands. Oh, it's a tug of war for the football. Kernahan was there, picking himself up ruefully. Michael Tuck, the bearded one. Time on being played. Added time in the first quarter, 25 minutes. Carlton hands. Snaps on into the pack as a goal. Naily. First game. Yes, that'll give him a lot of confidence. Uh, there he is. You find a strange coming from South Australia, but a guy like that early in the game, uh, he's obviously a great, a good player, and will develop as each game goes on. Carlton threw a goal from Naily, uh, run ahead, 24 to the Hawks, 16. The Hawks got the pressure on them now as it's hooked out of the centre. Dean playing in front of Burr, skipping up well as uh, was shot. He's playing well in that back pocket. Down to Kernahan, being attended this time by Lanford. Tuck placing himself well in between the play. The handball orts made it difficult for Loveridge. He goes backwards. The Blues in control now. Can swab do something. He's been a strong player for them on the back line. A strong tackle from behind as well. Russo. Lovely long kick. Platten goes for the double tick. Dipper. Lines up, bangs it away. And it's a goal from his first kick. He's done nothing. A ding-dong first quarter ended with the Hawks three points in front. But the shape of the match was soon to change. Hawthorne's runaway coming up later at around half past six. Now to early afternoon action at Victoria Park. The Swans have kicked the only two goals as we join ten minutes in. Commentators Peter G, Ian Robertson and Bernie Quinlan. Swings around onto the left, ends up handballing. Filke loses his footing. Turner's handball smothered. Banks beaten for it by Healy. The paddle to Williams, his first possession. Does something with it as usual. Cloak off the ground. Carter leading in the race of the ball for the Swans. He's got five metres. Good work from the Swans fullback. Good uh, handling from Bays. Gets it to Murphy and the Swans. Good play up the members' wing. Up the half forward, Kappa has to prop, and Christian takes the mark and the bit. No yeah, I'd like, like to look at this guy, Bernie Christian. He, at least he's sticking to it. Yeah, Ironmonger takes the mark, a one-hander. 
plays on and handballs it, puts it at Swans player and Healy under pressure. Through comes Turner. Turner kicks it quickly and it fortunately falls into the hands of Banks. Banks goes on, kicks it quickly, forced to kick. In towards centre half forward. Adams is there on the bottom of the pack. Kick off the ground by Lockman. He follows it up. Then he overruns the football. Adams comes clear. Kick it. No, he doesn't. He handballs it out wide. It's a poor hand pass and puts Co under lots of pressure. The Swans player in Tui. It's kicked off the ground by Roberts. Now it's picked up by Murphy to Browning, and Browning's kicked towards centre half forward as a long one. A spiral putt. Capper in front. He can't control it. Now on the bottom of the pack. The flick out goes to Bradbury. Bradbury's caught. The ball at centre half forward, and Bradbury penalised for holding the ball. He's a bit unlucky there. He slipped as he was about to be tackled. Uh, he didn't make an effort to really get rid of the ball. I think it was a free kick to Kappa. Third kick for Kappa, showing plenty of desperation, and the park pass is found right. Just picking it up off the grass. So Stevie Wright, his third kick also. About 40 metres out, only a slight angle. The breeze going from right to left. Kappa judged to a nicety. The first shot for goal of the match, as has Wright. Three straight goals, the Swans. And Collingwood have yet to trouble the scorer. Twelve and a half minutes in, and Kappa, some determined work there to win himself a free kick and finish it off with a pass to right. The difference at the moment between the two sides is that the Swans are finishing off their work up forward. Collingwood have had uh, plenty of opportunities, but they've got it down in the forward line and they've done nothing with it. They seem to be thinking twice. Uh, when they get the ball, Banks on a number of occasions could have got them moving forward but hesitated. That's right, there was a chance there. They, there was two blokes to handball the two and they handballed right in between both of them. A free kick against Collingwood. Too many men in the centre square and Ironmonger will take the kick and put the Swans back into attack. High flyer. Cap has marked it, kicked it quickly. Goes up towards full forward, offline, and a behind the Swans. The Swans 3-1. 19. Lead Collingwood get to score with 13 minutes into the first quarter. I think uh, Kappa should have steadied there and gone back for his kick. It seemed to be a clean mark. Christian, not quite to the square. Williams. Gets the ball in front of him. He's won the free kick for a trip. In fact, it's gone the way of Collingwood. So Lockman with the ball, kicking at centre half back, decides to go long towards centre half forward. Cloak, good mark by David Cloak. In front, the big man, very hard to move, kicks it in the direction of Taylor and Carter at the back. Oh, what a mark! It's Dennis Banks, a screamer. Great 35 mark. metres out, directly in front. Second mark for Dennis Banks, and surely Collingwood well, must at least bring up a score, and for their sake, they badly need a goal. 15 minutes in, the Swans three goals won, and Collingwood still to score. Goal umpire moves across slightly, and unfortunately, Banks has missed. Collingwood one behind. The Swans, three goals, one. Little reminiscent of that Banks mark of the year a few seasons back. Likes to get the run in. It's Carter puts it in for the Swans. Mark in front, two Banks. Further out this time, 55 metres, he squares it. Howard, new player for Collingwood, plays on now. Taylor, BT the crowd call. Get some good shepherding. I will have to do some work. 35 metres out from goal. Collingwood are behind. Trail the Swans, 3-1. 18 points down, the Magpies. Played 15 and a half minutes. Good play by Cloak. Gets the ball out towards centre-half forward. No one can control it. Browning interfered with and will receive the free kick at half-back for the Swans. The Swans perhaps receiving a little bit more of the uh, favour of the umpires. The handball goes wide to Bolton. Bolton high towards wing. Mark taken by Williams. Plays on. Oh, puts Holden under enormous pressure. His handball goes up towards centre half forward. Bays onto the left foot. A lovely looking kick as Bays to half forward. And Kappa, 50 metres out, takes the mark in front of Christian. And 
maybe the Pies may have to make a move there. Kappa's fifth kick, and we're only halfway through the first quarter, playing on the inexperienced Christian, one of Collingwood's many new players in their first match. Kappa, it's a long kick, it's offline, one behind. The Swans, 3-2-20, lead Collingwood, one behind, and 16 minutes have elapsed of the first quarter. What about that delivery of Bays there on the left foot? Geez, a fantastic kick. Um, that gave Christian no chance whatsoever to cut it off and uh, made it very easy for Kappa. Christian, straight down the middle. Ironmonger favoured here for the Swans. Got it knocked away by Starkovich. Williams, the handball. Nagel, oh, Lux of Fortune, Stevie Wright again. Similar position to which he kicked that goal after Kappa passed to him. Fourth kick for Wright. So far, he and Kappa have done all the scoring. Not a difficult assignment for him. 30 metres out. But the angle affects him, so a behind to Wright. His personal tally 1-1, Kappa's 2-2. That against the Magpies, one behind. Tactics kicking out from behind, so straight up the centre. No mark taken. Williams picks up the crumbs. Beautiful kick by Williams. Mitchell all alone at uh, half forward, between half forward and full forward. And Barry Mitchell, a chance to kick a goal for the Swans. Comes in. It's a nice looking kick by Mitchell. It's gone straight through the centre. And the Swans register their fourth goal. They're 4 3, 27. And they lead Collingwood one behind one point, 18 minutes into the first quarter. Here it is again, Williams. Lovely left foot kick out to Mitchell. Um, and he usually, usually can tell how a bloke's going to kick for goal the way he runs in. And he ran in very confidently and uh, made no mistakes with that shot at goal. So the Swans really getting the jump on the Magpies here. And Collingwood kicking with the aid of the breeze that has picked up just a little. Ironmonger dominating in the ruck. Oh, stolen off the boot beautifully. No free kick there for uh, Murphy, I think it is. He chases after, it comes to Shaw. CO. Manson runs into him. Handball comes out to Mitchell. Kicker of the last goal for the Swans. Just too long with that pass, but Wright's got it again. He's loving it on that half-board flank. About 45 metres out. Goes up to the unguarded line. And it goes through for a behind. So two kicks and the Swans have it up to full forward. Collingwood seem to be dithering on their forward line. Consequently, 27 points down. 19 and a half minutes into the first turn. Again, Christian kicks towards centre-half back. A big punch away by the Swans. Out it comes to Murphy. Murphy crunched to the ground. Players overrun the football. Brown in there. Slips the handball out wide. Short pass in towards the centre. It's a poorly directed one. Tui, strong in defence. Comes through and kicks it towards half forward. Kappa, again, sure, leading yeah. out in front of Christian, takes the mark, 45 metres out. And not a very difficult angle at all. Sure, I thought he would have got 15 metres there. Um, Christian really ran into him after he took the mark. Ball is the call, umpire agrees. Held to him, says Bays. Collingwood have it. Bradbury. Murphy let uh, go for it. Collingwood away, Manson. Brown to the wing, but in front it's the Swan skipper Carroll. Dennis Carroll. Nice kick of the football to half forward. And in front, you are paid. Tony Moore takes the mark on his chest at centre half forward. A short kick to the leading Kappa. Can't mark. Punched away by Christian. Half forward flank Bays. Pushed off the ball. Bradbury picked up by Brown over the top. Through comes Collingwood, but they can't control the ball. And it goes over the boundary line for a throw in some 45 metres around from the Swan goal. Howard can't get boot to it. He's being held all the while. 
Brown's handball over the top. Lockman. Searching handball. Finds Turner on the shore. Adams the target. Co gets in there with him. It's Adams who flicks it out cleverly. Manson's flick just comes unstuck. Carroll intercepts. Browning off the left boot. But Kappa's leading in the race. Christian again two or three metres behind him. Kappa steadies. No one within 10 metres. Kappa goals. Three goals for Warwick Kappa dominating the first term as are his team, the Swans. Yeah, great play there by Kappa. He's leading Christian to the ball on every occasion. Um, I think Matthews will have to think about making a change very quickly because he just can't leave this keep going on. Glenn Coleman, the uh, interchange player for the Swans, warming up on the boundary line as the balls bounce back in the centre. The Swans go forward again. They're pushing it towards centre-half forward on the bottom of the pack. Bradbury for Collingwood couldn't control it and the umpire decides on a bounce between centre and centre-half forward, slightly favouring the Swans. Iron Munger. No one in particular. Off the ball, Iron Munger has been tackled high. The bearded ironmonger slips the handball out wide. Carroll kicks well with either foot. This time a left foot kick up towards full forward. Collingwood under pressure. No talking, but they get out of trouble. A kick towards half back, punched away by Healy. Stevie Wright leading in the race for the ball. Interfered with by Bradbury, and Stevie Wright will take the free kick at half forward. And just maybe burning under the new rules. That was a questionable one. Ball oh. goes on to Tui. Tui kicks the ball towards full forward. It's a good looking kick. Kappa smothered by the Collingwood defence. Swan players leave it behind. Comes clear to Crossica. Crossica towards centre half back. And Co takes the mark for Collingwood. Sure. Under the left boot for Cloak. He's got front position. Good knock away from Carroll. Tui didn't go for it. This allows Co in from 45 metres. The pass has been picked up by Filkey. The Adelaide recruit doesn't go for goal, but. Uh, come off Lockman fading down a chance to goal from 35 metres out the angle a little more acute than Filky's shot for goal would have been I guess he gained 5 or 6 metres and Filky made the goal umpire work plenty of waving from the Swan supporters are behind for Collingwood Nothing going right for the Magpies at Victoria Park. The Swans went into the game as favourites, but Magpie supporters shocked by the events of the first quarter, and if they were shocked by the first, they were shattered by the second. Second quarter action coming up in the second hour of Football Grandstand, along with reports from the other three grounds, VFL Park, the MCG, and the Thriller down at Moorabbin, and we'll have a special guest in the studio, Essendon giant Paul Salmon, if I can shout loudly enough to be heard way up there near the ceiling. Well, it's half time in our football grandstand, but still an hour from the first bounce for ABC News this Saturday night. And with the headlines, here's Edwin Maher. Thanks, Tim. The football's been a bit like the activities in Canberra today because it's been a confusing and sometimes divisive day for the National Party. Sir Joe Bjorka-Peterson failed to bring on a vote at the party's council meeting in Canberra to split the federal coalition, but he has been given support in his push for Canberra. Sir Joe confirmed the show will go on and that he'll be resigning as Premier of Queensland. The Greek government has asked the Americans to suspend the operations of a communications base north of Athens because of the possibility of conflict between Greece and Turkey. The crisis over oil exploration rights in the Aegean looked like developing into armed conflict yesterday. But the situation cooled today when the Turkish government said it would keep its oil exploration ship out of the disputed waters if the Greeks followed suit. This is the research ship at the centre of the row. The Sismic One has caused a crisis before, in 1976, when Turkish plans for Aegean exploration brought the threat of war. Then the UN Security Council urged restraint, and Greece and Turkey pulled back from the brink. Melbourne's on-again, off-again rail dispute has thrown the city's public transport system into chaos. Suburban trains ran for about four hours late this afternoon, and will stop again at about seven because of the row over portable radios for train guards. As the talks dragged on, public transport users, particularly football fans, were the victims. 
Railway stations were deserted as the trains sat idle in the Jollymott railway yards, and the extra buses put on to help travellers were a poor substitute, causing widespread confusion. Then, just after three o'clock, the trains were running again, but only until seven o'clock tonight. Surgeons and medical staff from the Central Gippsland Hospital today said they'll consider resigning if a satisfactory resolution to the nurses' dispute is not reached this week. The hospital's board and staff will meet Labor Minister Steve Crabb on Monday to discuss the re-employment of the seven nurses sacked from the hospital. Tomorrow, Melbourne can expect more showers, and uh, I'll have the full details at seven. By the way, Tim, I'm wearing a neutral tie tonight rather than run the risk of being neutralised. Well, I'm wearing a neutral one too, Edwin, because my team, Carlton, got annihilated and I don't really want to talk about it. I'm in sympathy with you. Unfortunately, I've got to talk about it because uh, at the moment that's my job. Well, time for a football grandstand update on this second day of the 1987 season when there were four one-sided matches, relatively speaking, and one thriller which occurred down at Moorabbin. The winners on day two of the season, Essendon at VFL Park by 59 points over Footscray. In the grand final replay, Hawthorne by 45 against Carlton. The Swans, 91-point winners over a very disappointing Collingwood at Victoria Park. Melbourne, a tremendous start to the season, and they lived up to their pre-season form with a 39-point win over Fitzroy, third place last year. And Geelong came from, at one stage, 41 points down to snatch a one-point victory from St Kilda. So near and yet so far for the Saints in their opener down at Moorabbin. Last night, the Brisbane Bears away to a flying start with a 33-point win from North Melbourne. Today's reports, there were five last night, and today we know of four. David Rhys-Jones of Carlton, as you saw, on a rough play charge. Uh, David Williams of Melbourne for time-wasting. Another time-wasting one on Michael Conlon of Fitzroy. And the legal man, the lawyer Richard Loveridge, a very distinguished player from Hawthorne, up on a charge of an obscene gesture. I wonder what he did. Warwick Kappa was the star goal kicker with nine today. Alan Ezard of Essendon kicked seven. Jason Dunstall of Hawthorne got six. And Fitzroy's Doug Barwick got five in a losing score. Some injury news. Shane Robertson of Carlton, hamstring trouble. Dermot Brereton was off the ground in the first half with an ankle injury. Craig Holden of uh, the Swans with a thigh injury. A newcomer for Melbourne, Earl Spaulding, from whom the Demons are hoping for so much, leg trouble. And Trevor Barker carried off with a leg injury. But Gareth Andrews is just in from Moorabbin and tells me that the mercurial Barker is OK after the match. TAB details, footy bet today. Game two, selection 13, Essendon paid $4.95. Hawthorne, selection four, paid $3.30. Sydney, selection 15, $2.20. That was a favoured one. Melbourne, selection four, $4.60 and Geelong 9, $7.20. Last night, Brisbane 11 paid $7.10. There's today's double, 13 and 12, $31.35. And the footy quad today, 13, 12, 15 and 4, paid $3,155.20. Nice one for uh, successful quaddy punters on opening day. Well, now to our first review of our non-vision matches in round one. And firstly, out to VFL Park, where Essendon, who so many expect to improve considerably upon last year's fifth placing, much too strong for Footscray after a slowish first half. The Bombers led by just a goal at half time, but then kicked six goals to one in the third quarter and another six to two in the last for a 59 point win, seven goals to Ezard and for Footscray, three to McGuinness and Doug Bigelow smiling, I would have thought. There's a bit of a scowl on the face though. Biggs, what's wrong with a 59 point win? That's better. Well, eventually it was quite uh, quite satisfactory, Tim, but initially I thought the Dons did struggle and uh, uh, Footscray were able to bottle, bottle them up uh, quite nicely, as did Fitzroy in the elimination final of last year. But when they broke clear, their small players came right into the business in the second half. They were practically non-existent early. Salmon played a great game, incidentally. I hope we can get him in here. Fixed uh, forward or in the ruck? He played in the ruck and marked cleanly and uh, his around-the-ground play was excellent and... Uh, Quite a sound performance. Is that his place this year, do you think, on the ball? I think it could be, but uh, I think that Sheedy, as we well know, would use uh, he, Merritt, Simon Madden, who wasn't playing today, uh, of course, in that ruck position, but they've certainly got a bit of versatility there and a little bit of utility business to play around with. A couple of the Essendon recruits there's been a bit of talk about. Uh, Peter Francis coming to his fourth club, I think, now, and Tony Danaher. I thought Francis settled in quite nicely, tried to do something with the ball each time, and invariably he was successful. But uh, Anthony Danaher, of course, who has had uh, league experience with the Sydney Swans, was uh, a fine player for the Dons, didn't waste the football. And of course, that's the essence of the contract out there, do something with the ball, and each of those players certainly did it. Another fade-out by the Bulldogs. They faded out, you remember, against the West Coast Eagles in the National Panasonic Cup. Uh, what did you make of their effort? 
couldn't really work the fade out out. I think they might have run out of puff because of this bottling up situation in the first half of the game. But uh, Purser was a fellow who was uh, really vanquished, I thought, and uh, that might have been one of the reasons for it. But they had no one up forward. Winton did it doing an excellent job uh, on uh, Beasley. He played a fine game, young Winton, and it uh, looks uh, ready for a pretty good uh, future this season. Well, we've been joined by one of your Essendon heroes, the big man. Paul, thanks for coming in. Paul Salmon. All right. Biggs was just telling us you uh, spent most of the day on the ball, not in the fixed forward post. Do you see that as your likely role from now on? Oh, I think uh, it, I could be called upon a lot more this year. Um, we've been unlucky enough to have an injury assignment early. Um, but Kevin's got the options there, and uh, I'm thankful to be one of them. I think it's a long-term aim of mine to be more involved on the ball, and uh, I'm hoping that in the future I can establish myself and uh, hopefully play well enough to earn the spot regularly. I'd expect there's a strong feeling of wanting to avenge last year's uh, effort at Essendon. Are you aware of that? Oh, it certainly is. I think uh, most of the boys, or all the boys, um, and the match committee and, and administration are, are disappointed because we know we were capable of better. Um, but it is an aim, and uh, it's just a matter of morale and, and really the boys pulling together and, and playing the football we know we're capable of, and that's by doing hard things and, and setting ourselves a few aims and goals. Usually takes a little bit of time, uh, Paul, for big fellows to settle down. You must have been very happy with the neat way that I thought you uh, did the, that ruck work today. A bit disappointed possibly with the smaller players earlier who didn't give you the support that you had gained. Um, yes, I was, I was quite pleased I was getting my hands to the ball. Um, but essentially it is a ruckman's job to push it to the advantage of his rovers. I think uh, um, it was difficult early because the, the game was hot, um, naturally in the first quarter, and Footscray were... We're playing pretty well out of the centre and, and tending to maybe rave to me a little bit. Um, but I think as the game um, in, uh, progressed, um, we sort of worked out a couple of things out of the centre and, and uh, the, the boys started doing their job from the centre and it made it a lot easier up forward as the ball was coming down quicker. Seven goals to Alan Izzard. Did you make him look good or did his score make <laughs> you look good? Oh, I think uh, Bluey uh, does a fine job of making himself look good. Nah, he's always dangerous around goals and it's terrific to have that option in a small play. He reads the ball well and... He's not only a good crummer, but he's got pretty good hands too for his size. And uh, it's always good to have guys like himself and uh, other guys like Trevor Spencer and Roger contesting hard down there and Vander. And it, was, it made it easier for the small guys if they know the big men are going to put in a bit of an effort. He's got a bit of toe too. How far does he finish in front of everybody else in the sprints? Well, I know um, he finishes a long way ahead of me. Uh, <laughs> but no, he's, he's very quick over the first 10 and has to be watched. Um, so we're very happy to have him down there. Sheedy uh, does give Baker a late start of the season with his training, but uh, it wasn't obvious today with the way that he brilliantly uh, did the business. Well, Leon's a magical player. I love watching him. Um, I mean, I had a bit of a 10 minute spell on the bench myself today, and uh, a couple of things I saw him do are excellent. And, uh, well, Leon has done most of the pre season this year. Um, he's been out in the track, first one out in the track, and, uh, and working very hard, and he's a very fit bloke at the moment. And, uh, I only hope that he can continue his form from now on. I think he's, there's every chance he will. He's a great player. Thanks for making it in, Paul, from VFL Park. Great start to the year. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Doug. 59-point win to the Bombers over Footscray at league headquarters, VFL Park. Well, now back to our replay from Victoria Park. When we left it, it was almost quarter time, and the Swans had kicked away to a 33-point lead. In fact, the score at the first change was 5-5 to 2 points, and we pick it up at the start of the second quarter the sun. Well, it's coming out more brightly now as quarter's underway. Cloak is into the ruck, wins the tap, but it's straight to right. Swans immediately into attack, and the new man at fullback has uh, done it well first up. Krasiska, and he has moved on to Kappa. Christian seems to be at centre-half back. Good kick by Krasiska into the centre where Brown takes the mark. Another new player for Collingwood. He's at centre-half back. Plays on quickly, kicks it long towards centre-half forward. The Pies under pressure, punched away. Stevie right at the bottom of the pack. Hand pass to Dennis Carroll. Carroll out wide, finds Murphy. Murphy in the clear, kicks it towards half forward. And Swan players on their own all over the place. This looks like Henwood at half forward for the Swans. A long ball into the pocket. High flyers wanted. Kappa at the back takes the mark. He seems unbeatable. He's got his tail up at the moment. There it is again, a great mark, Kappa. He's got a great pair of hands, and uh, when he's confident he's up, there's no one who can stop him, really. Here's his eighth kick, shooting for goal now. Right 
through the middle. Tight angle, great goal, Kappa. So Warwick Kappa, superb. Four goals, two, his personal tally. And we're only a minute into the second quarter. And young man Krasiska had the front position the two times, but uh, he's giving a few inches away to Kappa. Yes, also Kappa's uh, got a very good spring and he uses his leg well to get that ride up. Nudge the opposition player out of the way a little also. Play restarted. Cloak now in the ruck. Can't get the ball clear. Mitchell, well tackled. Kick off the ground. Collingwood struggling. Turner, out towards half forward. Can they break clear? Carroll, Swan skipper. On the bottom of the pack, Felky. Umpire Halleck decides on a bounce between, well, it's on centre wing, member side of the ground, and Collingwood still struggling. We've only just started the second quarter, three minutes in, and as yet, Collingwood have to kick a goal. The bounce of the ball, kick, or kick on the ground by Mitchell, up towards half forward, Gaifer, hand pass, across in the direction of Hirasalakis, and the mark taken on centre wing. Take a rest, Robo, you've done it well. Ball the half forward. Oh, Collingwood. Oh, he didn't no, really attack it. it there. Chance now for Henwood. He's got a five-metre break. Gets some shepherding from right. Not a bad snap. The new boy's done it. Oh, on the line. A very timely interception. It looks like a handy play, Henwood. And Priesalakis was right there. The kick in. Siska finds Turner at half back for Collingwood. Turner looking in towards the centre. Browning's got the sit. Taps it on well. Healy, shoot for goal. A long one. Kappa again! 13 metres out directly in front. Kappa a chance to kick his fifth goal. The game is only 40 minutes old. Fifth mark. And he's already kicked four goals too. Proving to be a thorn in the side of Collingwood. You can't give Kappa to, uh, you know, two or three metres because he's got a good lead. And he's kicking for goal now. What's he done with it? Right through the middle. No problems with Kappa in that area. Five goals to Kappa now, and uh, he's really been the difference. Collingwood haven't got a forward line. Kappa is the forward line for the Swans. Well, there's a big margin there of the Swans, 46 points in front, but I think the thing, the uh, aspect of this game that would concern Lee Matthews would be that they're yet to kick a goal. And really, Robert, they haven't looked like kicking a goal, have they? Terrible performance so far by Collingwood. So it's Cloak in ruck trying to lift them, the vice-captain. Up against Ironmonger. Ironmonger wins a tap of sorts. Ball forward through Brindley. But uh, only as far as Murphy. Carroll. Some shepherding from Murphy to the 50 metre line. Mark almost paid to Henwood behind there. Chance for the Swans from the boundary line. Kappa has it knocked away. Good defence by Collingwood there. And there'll be a behind. Yes, through for behind. Uh, no, boundary umpire not fooled by uh, Krasiska. So, Swans, another golden opportunity. Henwood in ruck against Cloak. Taps him on the left side, then goes to his right side. Ooh, tackle. Well, a legitimate one, says the umpire. Well, I don't know about that. I think that's the easiest way out for the umpire. But anyway, he's decided to give the free kick to Collingwood. And they come clear towards half-back. Three on one. Ironmonger right over the top of Felky. Williams ducks his head. He should be penalised. Yes, that's a fair enough one. And Tony Shaw will take the free kick at half back. Williams penalised 15 metres for not giving the ball up. Perhaps another 15 metres. A Brownlow medalist of 1986, or co Brownlow medalist, penalised twice. Tony Shaw goes on with it, kicks it towards half forward. And in that marking duel, the umpire soars, has detected a free kick to Brian Taylor. Taylor will take a long kick to score. He's going for the short pass. Looking for Banks, it's over the top. Roberts, through comes Collingwood. They can't control it, it's kicked off the ground, out towards half forward. Chance for Williams. First of the ball was Howard, over the top to Banks. Banks taps it on to Tony Shaw. Back to Howard, Howard on the left foot, kicks it quickly. 
towards half forward to Mark taken there. A good one for Collingwood by CO. A good strong mark in front of the pack under lots of pressure. Yeah, great mark CO. He kept his eyes on the ball right through. Uh, six marks to CO. He's been one of Collingwood's few good players. Here we see it again. He received a lot of attention from Ironmonger and uh, really did it well in the end. and Magpie supporters as CO brings up their first goal of the match. They trail by six goals, four at the eight-minute mark of the quarter. Perhaps they can get a roll on now. They certainly need it. Yeah, I'm sure the Collingwood supporters will be hoping it doesn't take as long for the next goal to come around. The crowd trying to lift... The black and whites. Williams grabs the ball out of the ruck, looking for the free kick. He's bundled down and he's got the free kick. Starkovic getting into uh, his back. And that was telegraphed. Williams across to former Geelong teammate Tui. Bolton, the dummy, goes long. Kappa stays down. Roving by the Swans. The snap. Offline. Bays brings up a behind. Just a little. Uh, lackadaisical in that shot for goal he had uh, a bit of space to perhaps steady a little more the difference 41 points the kick in by Collingwood towards centre half back no mark taken Swan plays Williams at the bottom of the pack Neagle a quick kick out up towards half forward good play by Collingwood strong in defence they met the ball in Brown kicks it out towards the wing and a bit of good fortune Lockman's there on his own short pass up the half forward not a bad kick either no control there by Starcevic. Neither can CO control it. He taps it back in. Here's a chance for Lockman. But he's under pressure. There's three Swan players there. Browning, out of bounds on the full, yes. And the free kick will be taken at half forward for Collingwood by Felky. And Collingwood perhaps showing just a little sign that the tide may be turning. And Grant Felky for the Magpies. Taylor, front position, over the top, Ironmonger knocks it away. CO tackled well by Carroll, swung back in board by Adams, and a timely mark taken by Murphy, and there's no stopping him from a fullback. Holden, they're away, Healy, centre wing for the Swans. He has Bolton running through in the middle. Over the top two, that player, Bolton's got 20 metres from 65 out. Kappa up, brilliant mark! Superb mark, Warwick Kappa, going with the flight of the ball. He twisted and somehow managed to get some spring and bring it down. Oh, great mark, Kappa. Here we see it again. A promising move. It was all set up when it was run out of the back line. Healy had no one within a cooey of him as he came through the centre. Handballed it over to Bolton. Bolton, a long kick down to the forward line. Kappa flies. Brilliant mark. Caps it off with goal number six. Just got it. But six for Warwick Kappa, and we're only halfway, not even that, through the second quarter. It's been a superb start to the new season from the Swan Spearhead. Yes, the move of uh, the new player, what's his name, Cross Siska, onto Kappa hasn't been successful at all. And uh, be hard to beat that mark, though. Yeah, well, at this stage, you know, even Gaifer. Gaifer's a player who plays very close on the back line and uh, he sort of worries the forwards out of it. Bounce the ball back in the centre. David Cloak doing the ruck work for the Pies. It's ineffective, but here's the handball that's effective. Williams out towards the wing. Murphy crashes his way through, does it well. He's awarded a free kick at half forward. Poor tackle by Howard and David Murphy. Bit of an unsung hero is this young fellow playing on the wing and doing it well. A long kick, a very long ball into the forward line. Kappa! Oh, what a screamer by Warwick Kappa. And he struts his stuff at Victoria Park in the first match of the season. Already kicked six. Watch this. Oof. 
every picture tells a story. Mark number seven coming up for goal number seven. And the Swans are annihilating the Pies. His tenth kick, seven goals, two. And the Swans lead at the 12 minute mark. The Swans at 9 7, 61, Collingwood 1 2 8. Well, it's hard to know what to do with Kappa because uh, everything that comes his way is just. Uh taking sensational marks which really no one can really stop him as you said before Peter well the Collingwood fans will be very disappointed with the performance of their team but even the knockers of Warwick Kappa could do nothing but admire his performance so far and there's plenty of this match left thankfully for the Magpies they've really got to use a lot of it now to get back into this By how it restarts. Cloak, it's a tap but shark by Williams. The handball effective as usual. Carroll's high kick. Going back under it, Howard was very brave. Knocked to ground by Henwood. Here's Murphy. Bolton can handball again to Healy. Will shoot instead. And goal. Magical stuff from the Sydney Swans. And Murphy has been a real spark. Bolton capping it off. Yes, you're uh play has been just magic as I said it's uh, really the, the way they've ran and had numbers at the ball it's just given Collingwood no chance to get their act together at all Ironmonger the big bearded swan ruckman opposed by cloak Collingwood can't seem to get any system going out of the centre. This time it's the Swans again break clear. Turner takes the mark, plays on, gives it to Tony Shaw. Tackled by Bolton. Ball runs free. Howard, long hand pass to Cloak, and Cloak will come clear. Decides on the hand pass to Brown on centre wing. Brown kicks it towards centre half forward. Taylor behind, can't mark. Play on, says the umpire. Now Taylor takes possession, but his man gets in the road. Here's a hand pass. Out wide. Start to reach. Goals for Collingwood. Disaster for the Magpies. The Swans kicked five goals to none in the first quarter, nine to three in the second, six to two in the third, and finished it off with five to Collingwood six for some respectability in the last, if you call a 91-point loss. <laughs> Welcome again to Football Grandstand on the second day of round nine, a day when the wind blew, Hawthorne blew Essendon away, and there was barely a breath between Carlton and Fitzroy in the match of the day. Well, action from both of those games coming up in the next 140 minutes, as well as from Footscray's win over the Bears at the Western Oval. We review the day's main games in the next quarter of an hour, and then we go to VFL Park to see Hawthorne set up its huge win. At about 5.30, it's the thrilling second half from Princess Park, just before 6.30, we'll have St Kilda's Ken Sheldon in our studio to talk about the Saints' narrow loss against Collingwood and then our final replay comes from the Western Oval. But first, it's back to the opening of the round last night at the MCG. North Melbourne looking for its fifth win to put it on the right side of the ledger after nine matches and Richmond, after one win in its last 15, seeking to salvage some prestige and to atone for last Sunday's woeful performance at Carrara. The Tigers' response to the criticism of the last five days was quickly apparent. Strongman Mark Lee dished out the strong-arm tactics on Wayne Schimmelbush in the first minute. Likely teammates in next Wednesday's interstate clash, you wouldn't have guessed it. And for a moment, Schimmer's immediate playing future was wobbly. 30 seconds later, State Rover Dale Waitman's name was in the books of two umpires after tangling with North defender John Law. And while all this was happening, Michael Roach was signalling his return after injury with a strong mark and straight kick for the first goal of the night. But the Kangaroos were quickly into stride, with Dean McRae snapping cleverly for their first at the nine-minute mark. 
Cray. A Cray and a great goal he's kicked. 90 Steve seconds McCann later, the Richmond Jimmy defense was back to its form of last Sunday at Carrara, and Steve McCann and Phil Cracker grabbed the chance. The first quarter was starting to look like another disaster for the Tigers when Dale Waitman's name went into the book for the second time, just 14 minutes into the match, this time for time wasting. But Michael Roach was providing the one ray of light, and his second kept Richmond in touch. But North's pace and polish were showing, and they led by 12 points at the change. The second term started as the first had finished. But the ruse kicking wasn't lovely. In fact, it was fairly ordinary. But the North running game was coming together, with Larkin often in the midst of the build-ups. This move setting up another goal to Phil Cracker in his 100th game for the ruse opened a 25-point lead. The Tigers were again falling apart. The next 30 seconds just about sums up where they're at. Puts it back out wide to Smith. And he fumbles in the back pocket. Here's trouble. Jim Cracker there to apply the tackle. Ooh, bit lucky. It comes now to Demetrio. 40 metres out. Hooks back. Fairly. Great mark. The contrast between the teams was showing. North, skillful and fast. The Tigers, awkward and cumbersome. And the difference was 31 points by half time. The winners were laughing, and the losers pleasing themselves. Although in this instance, the winners were pleasing themselves as they advanced to an eight-goal lead early in the third term, and the match was virtually over. The final margin was 34 points, a great result in Phil Cracker's 100th game with North. In a rare interview with Doug Hayward, Cracker said he hopes to play many more and that North's 87 prospects are bright. I think, you know, our next four weeks will be a big test, uh, you know, the, the top four sides in the, in the five. So, uh, you know, if we can survive there, we've got a big chance for the finals. Phil, did Richmond fade at the end, did you feel, or did they keep on fighting it out? No, Richmond, you know, they, they were pretty determined. Uh, I think, you know, like we missed a lot of scoring opportunities and all that sort of stuff, and, uh, and to Richmond's credit, they fought it right out to the end. You missed a couple of easy ones there, your brother will smack your wrist. Oh, very, very disappointing those. Uh, I think I missed one from 12 metres out, and uh, I think that's the first time ever I've ever, I've ever done that, so I don't know. Yes, well, congratulations, Phil. The last time I saw you, you were very depressed when you played poorly in Perth. Very rare does that happen, but a wonderful career you've had here. Will you be here next year? Certainly, yes. I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to another, uh, hopefully, five or seven years. But next door, another champion small man can only look forward to a spell on the sidelines. Dale Waitman sustained a broken hand as well as being reported twice and will miss Wednesday's interstate clash. Yeah, it is. You know, I look forward to the state games. You know, I, uh, I love playing for Victoria and uh, I love winning them. But uh, with a hand, it's, I can't play, any, play for about four weeks, so I'll just have to sit back and watch it on Wednesday night. Next Wednesday night at Adelaide's Football Park, the first of this year's State of Origin matches between Victoria and South Australia. Is the Big V still footy's proudest symbol? Can the Vicks atone for last year's losses to South and Western Australia? Does Victoria still produce the best footballers in the country? Watch it live on ABC at 8.30 next Wednesday and find out. Don't miss it. Well, so much for next Wednesday and for last night. Now to what happened today on the second day of round nine. Four matches played and a full range of margins. Hawthorne by a mass of 114 points at VFL Park against their once great rival Essendon. Collingwood just held on to win by a goal from a fast finishing St Kilda. Footscray always in charge against the Brisbane Bears at the Western Oval for a 32 point win. Carlton a great second half for a 22 point win against co-tenant Fitzroy at Prince's Park and last night North Melbourne by 34 points at the MCG against the hapless Richmond who have won once this year and prior to that 
their previous victory was against North Melbourne under lights at the MCG last year. So uh, the wheels go on a full circle and the Tigers haven't really improved. A look at today's major goal kickers just before we go to Princess Park. And despite the fact that it was low scoring at Princess Park, Richard Osborne managed six out of nine in a losing team. Tony McGuinness and Dermot Brereton each got six. And look at the Hawks up among that list. Peter Curran and Russell Morris also kicked four apiece. Trevor Barker, four and a quarter after coming off the interchange bench. Ken Sheldon and Nicky Winmar, those three kicking a dozen between them out of St Kilda's total of 15 at Victoria Park. Well, our first match for review is the match at Princess Park between Carlton and Fitzroy. Boomed as the match of the day and it certainly turned out that way. Fitzroy dominated the first half of the game in blustery conditions. In fact, there was only one goal kicked in the first quarter of the game. That by Fitzroy when Carlton were using the wind and it really looked as if Carlton had virtually kicked themselves out of it in the first term. Fitzroy consolidated in the second quarter, gained a three goal break, but then the Blues came back and they've scored a great 22 point win. Bernie Quinlan's on deck out at Princes Park. I'm sure feeling a little bit disappointed about it, but uh, Bernie, the Blues have impressed you prior to this and I gather they would have done again today. Yes Tim, it was a pretty impressive performance by Carlton because uh, they turned around a 21 point deficit at half time to end up running out fairly easy victors in the end by 22 points. How, but, did, uh, how did they achieve the turnaround? Well, at half time it really looked like it was Fitzroy's game as most people thought around the place that Fitzroy were going to go away with it. But uh, Madden took over at the start of the third quarter and uh, well you have a look at his statistics, he's had um, 40 knockouts to Randall's 11, so he, he completely dominated the ruck. And Calvin got their smaller players running. David Parkin, for some reason, changed four roos to centre half forward and put Gary Keane to centre half back, and that's when Coonahan started to take over. Roos had been on top of Coonahan, but uh, once Keane was moved there, Coonahan took right over, ended up. Um, he didn't kick a goal for the game, Coonahan, he kicked six behinds, but really he could have swung the game right in Carlton's favour if he had a kick straight. Well, you mentioned Roos, uh, also Gary Pert, of course, coming back, the uh, fabulous duo at Fitzroy. How did Pert in particular go after a long time out? Well, Gary played quite well, um, not one of his best games, but he'll be improved by the outing. Um, he probably looked a little bit sluggish. He certainly uh, wasn't the Gary Pert that we know, the dashing player that he has been in the past, but of course he'll be a little bit tentative until he gets full confidence back on his knees. But it was encouraging, encouraging performance by Purdy. And uh, Ruzi really, I thought, beat Coonahan when he played on him. But uh, as I say, he went for, from uh, centre-half back to centre-half forward from that period in the third quarter to halfway through the last quarter, and that's when Coonahan really took over. At the other end of the ground, Carlton suffered another injury to a key defender in John Dorotic who uh, was carried off on a stretcher. Uh, do you know what the damage was? Yes, well that looked pretty serious at the time. Um, Kennedy pushed Keith Thomas into Dorotic when he was bending over to pick up the ball and he seemed to uh, receive a, a, neck, a, a knee to the, the neck area. Uh, they carried him off and it looked as if he had sustained fairly serious damage to his neck. But uh, halfway through that third quarter he walked around the boundary line to the cheers of the Carlton crowd and I'm sure that also gave Carlton players out on the field a big lift. It wasn't a day conducive to the type of football Carlton liked to play and they were really harassed in the first half of the game and yet they've turned it around for a big win. It's a pretty encouraging result. Yeah, it was, Tim. Um, really, I thought Fitzroy were the better side in the first half, as the scores indicated. They tackled well, they harassed Carlton, as you say, and uh, they couldn't get their game going at all. But really, with Justin Madden in the ruck taking over in the second half, uh, Glass got doing well. They really had a lot of avenues to goal and uh, really took over in that second half. Well, you mentioned David Glascott. I think uh, Drew Morford might be with him down in the Carlton change rooms. So let's go down and uh, hear from the Blues number 32. Well, David, uh, obviously tremendous pressure in the first half. Difficult conditions. How hard was it? Yeah, Robbo, it's pretty hard. Uh, when we got out in the ground, it was a lot windier than what I thought it would be. And, uh, you know, the wind was blowing across the ground down towards the, the uh, scoreboard. And for a start, it took us, you know, 30, 30 minutes to uh, work out which way the wind was blowing and how swirl it was. It was very difficult. Was it uh, a major concern for Robert at half time? You know, you were trailing by 21 points. What sort of comments did he make? Yeah, we, we weren't too worried, or we were worried, but uh, we, we knew we weren't playing well, and uh, they were only 20 points up, so we knew if we uh, worked as a team and did all the right things, the running and the handball, the handballs were down at the half time, we knew that we'd work our way back into it. 
and uh, Stephen Kernahan struggled early but certainly lifted in the third quarter and there were a couple of other players that lifted uh, Johnston kept getting the ball and Bradley started to run with the football yeah I think it I think at half time we only had about four or five players who were uh, actually contributing up to their optimum um, and then in the second half as you said uh, Stephen Kernahan started to take some of those great marks of his and John Owen Brattles getting the ball out of the centre and uh, picking up a lot of kicks around the ground and, and those three players are the three ones that keep us going so it was great to have them on top in the second half Obviously you fellas are thinking fairly positively now I mean uh, you're on top of the ladder you've won what six out of eight mm, yes. are you looking at is the, t is the club looking at the finals time or are you still taking it week by week? Well, we at the start of the year we we made some goals for ourselves, and uh, you know we uh, hopefully some of them that we've uh, we've uh, completed by now. Um, we're not looking at the finals at all. We've got a great team spirit, and something that Carlton's been lacking for a couple of years now. And uh, I think with the influx of the players, the new players that we've got, and the younger players, Hannah Gleeson, those sort of guys, Dave, it's a great spirit at the moment. And uh, you know the club's really working well together. Well, you played a tremendous game. Congratulations, and keep it up for the rest of the season. Thanks, Robert. Uh, well done. Ian Robertson doing the interview with David Glascott out at Princess Park. Carlton, 22-point winners over Fitzroy in the game of the day and a tremendous win by the Blues, who retained top spot on the ladder. Well, now to VFL Park for the clash between the two teams who have tended to hold down the two top spots over recent years, Hawthorne and Essendon. What great rivals they've been in the early part of the 1980s through to the middle stage of this decade, fighting out consecutive grand finals in 83, 84 and 85. But on today's result, it seems John Nichols, who's sitting out there and uh, not too many people left there, I'm sure all the Bomber supporters have gone home, that the period of great rivalry might just about have come to an end. Certainly has this year, Tim. Uh, Hawthorne were just uh, dynamic. Uh, on the other hand, Essendon, uh, they had quite a lot of tries, but they're just undermanned. The, the baby Bombers, there's about five, uh, five young players there, they're just not quite up to it at this stage. But Hawthorne were just magnificent. Well, when a team loses by that margin, uh, one imagines that the other team, or that team, didn't really put in as well they might, but you're saying they, they did fire a shot? Well, Essendon tried hard, but uh, I think uh, it was just a combined uh, power, you know, and right from the start in the first quarter, Hawthorne, uh, you know, they're knocking the ball on the ground, they're crawling along, it was just a magnificent teamwork, and then as the game progressed, by quarter time, uh, you know, Essendon were playing behind. Essen, Hawthorne had front spots all the time, and then all of a sudden, up Bob's Brereton playing well, six goals, Curran four goals, uh, Morris four goals. Morris into the forward line has been a great success, in my opinion. Yes, well, the Bombers. I suppose the logical conclusion now is that the question has been answered. Uh, they're just about gone. The great period of uh, control of the VFL is over. Well, as far as control goes, I haven't had that for a couple of years, but I think this year, the, the, today really showed uh, just what a great player Simon Madden is. I mean, Simon, probably obviously half fit, uh, played well. Whilst he was on the ball in the ruck, he won nearly every time, and uh, he spent quite a lot of time on the bench, which even under Dunn I was surprised with, because I felt that uh, they need him desperately, and at least he got through the game OK. Unfortunately, Mark Harvey, uh, first game back after a broken leg, Got another knock on the leg, I think, in the same spot in the first quarter, and then uh, spent the rest of the day on the bench. In fact, uh, got changed into his civvies at half time. So, but uh, the, the four or five young players, that, that, as the year goes on, Essendon was just so bad today. It was, it was, uh, it was impossible to see them beating Hawthorne later in the year. But I'm sure Essendon will will regroup and settle down to be still uh, a chance for the five later in the year. And Hawthorne certainly is to be up among it and uh, by the sound of you they really are going to take well, some stopping once again. They really impressed me I think if uh, Sydney and Carlton watch the replay of this game which I'm sure they will it was awesome you know even though Essendon made them look good as the game went on but uh, Ayers, Ayers back in the back line and uh, you know just all over the ground uh, they it was, a, it was a supreme team effort you know probably the youngest player in the side the, the newest uh, even in, in Jinky on the back line he just fits in so easily that uh, he just looks like an old Hawthorne player for years and years. Well, we talked of Essendon 84-85 as being one of the all-time great teams. It sounds like the Hawks, if they can maintain that, in 86-87 might be right up there with them. Well, uh, they certainly will. I think Greg Deere in the rucks probably uh, has got to lift a bit at this stage because uh, Loveridge and Platten are roving magnificently and uh, it's all over. Hawthorne didn't have a weak player. Probably Deere was probably not the weakest, but he got beaten in the ruck a lot by 
certainly by Simon Madden and also by uh, Salmon when he was in the ruck, but the, the Hawthorne were just so strong all over the ground. Isn't Deer being coached properly anymore? Well, I haven't been there for a couple of years, so I can't really comment on that. You have uh, spent a bit of time with him? Yes, he's, uh, he impresses me as an up-and-coming ruckman, and uh, I was talking to Greg last week, and he feels, he knows himself, he's a bit below his form, but uh, knowing him, uh, he's a good ruckman, and certainly uh, as the year goes on, he's their best chance, and uh, I'm sure that there won't be anyone else at Hawthorne, apart from Harding when he comes back from injury, that's going to put the pressure on Deer. OK, thanks, Big Nick. We might go down to the winners' rooms now, and I'm sure it'll be a happy place, a 114-point victory over their arch-rival. And here's Peter Schwab with Peter G. It is a happy place, Tim and Peter Schwab. Uh, we didn't expect to be seeing you out there when the teams were announced. Uh, when did you know that you were taking Peter Russo's place? Uh, Alan rang me Friday night at about 8 o'clock and uh, told me I'd be in the 18 and told me they'd give me a go in the centre, which was pleasing. Uh, What's the uh, extent of Peter's injury? I think he's been having trouble with his thigh and it's... Uh, it's not serious, but it's more nagging him, and I think he's, you know, he's just been a little bit disappointed with it, sort of hanging on for so long. But uh, we hope to have him back on the side soon. He's a valuable player. Well, your form has been, uh, well, not what we'd expect from you this season. Uh, how then can you come out and then, well, perhaps get best on the ground? Though you probably had some competition from uh, the likes of John Kennedy today. Yeah, we had a lot of good players. Um, personally, I think I had my back to the wall. I'd been dropped, and then I got another chance today. And I think when you get another chance, you've got to make the most of it because it's such a good side. Also, uh, the thing in the back of my mind was uh, that next week, if I play well, would be my 100th. So I didn't want to get dropped on 99 because then if I drop the second time this year, it'd be, it'd be much harder to get back for that. So I think that spurred me on a bit and also the, the challenge of playing in the centre, which was pleasing. What about the Essendon side that you played today? Uh after the 80s have been dominated by the two clubs, uh, did it seem like a traditional Essendon Hawthorne game? I, I suppose not if you look at the score. And, uh, but I, I think we played as well as we've played for a long, long time. And our pressure on Essendon was the best I've seen for, you know, for ages. I still think Essendon are going through a bit of trouble with injuries. And you know, once they get their injuries sorted out, I think, you know, I think they're still a very good side. And, it's always a physical contest. I actually, you know, I enjoy playing against Essendon. Not, I find it hard to play against them, but I, I enjoy the contest. Yeah. Well, uh, the whole side enjoyed the uh, contest out there today. Your, your passing, especially, seemed pinpoint accurate all day. Yeah, we. Um, I think we were prepared to run, and we knew blokes were going to give the handball, and we knew the, tack the tackling was superb, and a lot of free balls spilled loose, and we were able to capitalise on that. And the blokes just ran very, very hard and worked hard, as, as Yabby said, in all three areas, which is when we got the ball or when they had it or when it was, you know, in limbo, when we had to work for it. But, yeah, I, I was very pleased with the side. It was great. All right. Well, uh, congratulations on your game today, and uh, you're certainly looking forward to Game 100. Congratulations on that. Look forward to another good one next week. I hope so, Peter. Thanks very much. So a 114-point win to the Hawks, and perhaps that period of rivalry uh, shouldn't be considered over just yet. In fact, the last time these two great rivals met was in round 18 last year, and Essendon were winners by 87 points. The Hawks only lost one more match for the year. That was the second semi-final against Carlton. They certainly reversed that loss, and they reversed the round 18 loss today with that huge victory at VFL Park. Well, we go to VFL Park for action now, and we join the match right at its start, because thereafter it was pretty much all the Hawks. And our commentary team is Peter G., Jeff Leake and John Nichols. To start this match. Rowan Sawes holds the ball aloft and we're underway. The crowd has built up very quickly. The up around uh, getting towards 30,000 as the bounce down takes place. Deer number 14 wins a tap of sorts against Madden. Down goes Williams and he'll get the free and the Bombers first into attack. From the centre. Francis takes it. The centre chips one out to Hawker. He's running well. He's into the 50 metre semicircle now and the first score coming up to the Bombers it's a quick shot oh and off Eads hands who seems to have dropped into the back pocket for the Hawks in this opening minute and he'll put the ball back into play first score is a behind to Essendon and you notice Glenn Hawker keeping the ball low there so obviously that breeze is quite strong as he swings play to the broadcast side of the ground and good mark from Michael Tuck plays on quickly Dippie Domenico on half back chorus of boos as he goes into the middle all Hawks and it's Kennedy with it. Feeds the handball out quickly. Chris Mew down the wing. 
Driving long, Brereton won't get there in time. He gets the ricochet. Good uh, dodging from Brereton, trying to square the ball. Can't get good purchase to it. Good tackling from the uh, Hawks forwards. Curran taps on. Brereton from the boundary line. He makes it easier on himself, but great tackle, Madden. Back for Curran. First goals of the Hawks. Brilliant dynamic start by Hawthorne. They just kept pressure on, even though some good tackles by Essman. Watching Curran knock the ball out. Typical Hawthorne knock on to Brereton. Took a couple of steps too long, but still he retained possession of the ball. Leverage to Curran and a great snap. But uh, it's going to be a pressure game till these sides settle down. It's a very important one for Hawthorne. First blood to the Hawks in a minute and a half of footy. Madden doing well on the ruck now in his first game for the season. Roger Merritt goes down, strong tackle put on him by Abbott, and Merritt takes the kick from the centre. The breeze at uh, Waverley is blowing across the ground, Eston kicking from uh, left to right. Interference there, Morrissey takes the kick, half-back, boots it out towards the, uh, the wing position, rush over the shoulder, and Russell Morris will take the free kick. Morris... Not getting 15, the man on the mark just moved back a metre or so. It's Morris, drives it to centre wing, Tuck leaves it. Walsh unable to gather it, but he's got plenty of support. Folds, who's been playing better of weeks, there's a fight on behind. As the mark's taken by Morris on half back. Madden in there on that one, Brereton as well on the fight. His 15 metre penalty almost brings Morris up to the wing as he goes high. Again, they all sit there looking to see who'll fly. Madden taps on. Pick up by Hawker. He might get a trip there. In the back is the decision, so Glenn Hawker to take the free. Midway between half-back and wing for the Bombers. Best and best and fairest last year, and having a good season this year. Uh, this is round nine. A merit knocked away from him by uh, the big fellow Deer, or Abbott, rather, and then the ball out of play. It's on Eston's half-forward line. The Hawks are leading at the three-minute mark. Six points to Essendon's one. Merritt beats Abbott, but it's Schwab who gets onto it first. Not a good handball. Hawker feeds out a beauty. Ezard's kick doesn't go the required distance. Kick off the ground from Abbott. They move it forward half a metre in rugby style, so a bounce. The square you see behind is in Essendon's attacking zone. They trail by five points. Not a bad crowd at Waverley to see uh, the battle of... Uh, they played three grand finals in a row. That's Tuck. Just Francis for Essendon. Oh, it's not a bad kick either, but Langford will get this. He does. Mark that uh, judgment was good. Doesn't worry about where he kicks it. Swings from one side to the other. Keeps it low into the breeze. Here's Dipper with his first touch, and it's a good one. Oh, wasn't too good, a swab was caught. Francis again with a handle, but swab pulled down indiscriminately after he disposed of it and will take the kick near the centre. Peter Swab, he going past. The Rocket. It's a high looking for Brereton. He's in front of Walsh. Easy as you like. Bit of extra pace on Dermot Brereton in the last few weeks. And add two metres on Walsh. That's... Uh, Enough for Dermot, and from 45 metres. Hawk goal number two, not scored, distance won't quite be there. Off the hands of Morris, Loveridge there. Kennedy thought about kicking it uh, in mid-air. The bounce in the forward pocket for Hawthorne. Coming up to the five minute mark, they're five points up. Clark going off, and Harvey has gone on for the first time at the five-minute mark of the first quarter. And the ball is in the Hawthorne full forward line. That's Madden doing some good work there. His Clatton had a blind shot. Bit congested there. Swab doing well. Strong tackle. Dunstall. Had a shot, a wild one from only about 35 metres out, and it's another uh, uh, behind. The first front for Hawthorne. They lead 7-1. to one. Yes, already uh, Simon Clark off the field, and... Uh... Mark Harvey came back on the field at the uh, five-minute mark. Kicking by Winton. Walsh, plenty of space on half-back to make up his mind. Goes into the middle looking for Merritt, but it won't make him. Tuck. Waste no time. Chips for Curran. Within scoring range. Curran almost directly in front. Will kick from about 50 metres. 
Hawthorne lead by six points. Six minute mark of the first quarter. Off the side of the boot won't come around enough. Brereton flies from the side. Throw in in the forward pocket for the Hawks. That wasn't a very long kick for Curran, and uh, he missed badly. Uh, it had no uh, way was it going to be a goal or he a score. He kept looking like uh, he didn't think he could yeah. make the distance, so perhaps yeah. the breeze is uh, favouring Essendon's yeah. end in this could opening be. quarter. Could be, Peter, the, the, but the flags are stretching out uh, quite well from those flags. Morrison. Swap. That was easy. Too easy, in fact, for Essendon. They'll have to have a good look at themselves. Peter Swab replaced Peter Russo in the Hawthorne lineup and has kicked possibly uh, one of the easiest goals in his career. And the Hawks lead 13 to the Bombers 1. He's watching the replay. Handball by Kennedy to Morris. Quick snap from Swab. Swab has followed his man right down from the back line and uh, it was, as Jeff said, a, a snap with not much pressure on him. And uh, Essendon are a bit loose at this stage. Deer from the side, not judged well by Madden, just feeling his feet again. Down went Morrison, he's got the free. Right in the middle of VFL Park, Russell Morris. Starting off well, as he did last week against Geelong for the Hawks. Puts it high. Favours Essendon here, Curran against Winton. Handballed out to Winton. Good play from Thompson. Folds won't get it in time. Now to wing, first time the play's been over there for the afternoon. Just into Hawthorne's attacking half. And they've done the bulk of the scoring. They lead by 12 points. Seven and three quarter minutes into the first turn. Now it's very windy uh, out that side of the ground on the outer. Just see how the players handle it. Well, Madden beautifully with a par, but where's the Rovers? Here's one, it's fault. Up to Ezard, who's struggling for form this year. Uh, if he ever strikes it, going to be a dangerous player but he's been covered at this stage it's like janky with him perhaps the tongues of his boots are too long <laughs> tripping <laughs> over them <laughs> big wrestle and madden starting to uh, find those feet and palms in the ruck but uh folds unable to get away so it will be madden against deer again deer wins this one but it's all Essendon key. Squaring kick. Didn't make it to uh, Hawker. Deer. Now Hawker again. Little scoop. And it was picked up by the umpire. Definitely was a throw. Against Glenn Hawker. And they waste no time. Loveridge calling for the ball from Tuck. He has to stop and prop. In fact, it's Ayers who gathers it. Then feeds on to Loveridge. Loveridge half forward. About 75 metres out. Putting it up for Dunsell. A very hard man to move, Jason Dunstall, and he judged that one a little better. Looks like Harvey's in trouble. Uh, yes, he's yeah, uh, already first came yeah. back after a broken leg, and uh, he's limping pretty badly. But uh, hopefully, for Mark's sake, it's just a bruise. 25 metres out, Dunstall. He's got the third for the Hawks. No, I thought the goal up by hadn't worked enough. Second behind for Jason Dunstall. And Paul Hamilton, who's binding him, uh, is in for a torrid day. Here's Winton. Winton playing on Karen, by the way. Oh, a good mark, Walsh. Now, Walsh is Brereton's opponent. He's at half-back. It's a windy side of the ground as he kicks it down towards the uh, half Oh, That was a poor attempt there. Oh, crush, swap duck to tackle. Here's Williams. And the umpire spotted something there on the free kick. A very, a very slow one for that pop on the head, about five seconds slow. And Swab takes the free kick from the centre. Now to Platt. Oh, crunch was said. Was Duckworth the infringer? Scramble is action now, live action. Dipper was in there. Karen as well for oh. Hawthorne. Boy, and Karen caught one. Thompson really went after that ball. He thought he'd been harshly dealt with in the tackle, I think. And uh, a little indiscriminate with the, the boot on the ground there. Curran, he's kicked a goal. No, yes, just one. Ball knocked away. Good defence from Dunstall, but Platten's quick on to Deer. Feeds it on and turned to Morris. Too much pace and a goal. <laughs> Russell Morris, speedy in kicking the ball and speedy in running back to congratulate the work from his teammates up ground. 
Hawthorne. Hawthorne, a great start. Great start. A lot of this data from John Platt. And, uh, very courageous watching him come through there. Breakthrough pack. Good handball, dear to Morris. A good shepherd by Kennedy. But once again, Hawthorne had plenty of time to shoot, which uh, must be worrying for Kevin Kevin Sheedy. And with players like Brereton and Morris and Karen and Dunstall and Platt on that forward line, uh, they certainly better set up an Essendon. Hawthorne 20 to Essendon's one. Madden looks good. Oh, a nice tap. Into a space of the half forward line. Perrot looked a bit awkward, but he went in hard. Jenkins, uh, the man will take the free kick. Perrot right in Jenkins' back. But the Hawks will go into attack once more. A very hard decision because both players just dived on the ball. A little chip. Oh, Morris, he ducked his head. He pulled out. Swab a good piece of play. Leverage a long kick down to the half forward line to Karen and Brereton. But Walsh's fist for Eston that knocks him out. Karen goes on with it. Morris again. Dia up the full forward. Dutch will turn his.